Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, so we just finished another flip here in Marietta. So this one was originally built in 2020. So less than a year ago, this was built by a so-called builder. But if you see the before, which I will make sure that is linked in the description, definitely check it out so you can see how large of a transformation this was. It was terrible. From the colors to the tile selection to the craftsmanship, all of it was awful, all of it had to come out and it had to be completely redone. So before it was just a plain red brick house, it was super sterile, there was no curb appeal and it looks like a doctor's office. So we played on that and that actually took us through the theme from the outside all the way into the house. So we went very farmhouse on this, which you guys know is not truly my style, but I tapped into my inner Joanna Gaines we went full shiplap on this house, which is so new for me because shiplap is not even my vibe, but it worked out so well. So we went with farmhouse because again, we had this brand new red brick that I knew that I wanted to whitewash. So that's what we did here. Um, we painted the windows black. We added some shutters for curb appeal to warm up the outside. We changed the front door because the last one just did not go with the style of the house. We made sure to add one with windows so that you got a little natural light in the entryway. And the biggest change out here, before there was only one window. So again, for curb appeal purposes, it was not symmetrical. I would not have been able to add shutters. So we went ahead and cut out another window. It's actually in a bedroom. When we get up there, obviously I'll show you, but it made all the difference and I'm so happy with how the outside turned out. So let's go inside so I can show you all the real work that got done. As you can see for starters here in the entryway, changing out that front door made all the difference. So we took out that old heavy door, we changed it for a nice wooden one that has um, windows in it. So it lets lots of light in and you can take full advantage of this entryway. If you guys remember, we had the most awful tile in here. So we took all that tile out and let me tell you, this guy clearly shopped the clearance rack because it was literally a different tile in every part of the house and he did not know what he was doing as far as install was concerned. The material used to lay the tile, so the first floor is obviously cement, it's on a slab and the material to lay the tile was literally half an inch thick. It took us over a week, almost 10 days just to rip out the tile and all of the glue underneath <laughs> but it was worth it we took it out we put in this beautiful warm um, dark laminate it's waterproof laminate and then we changed all the paint colors we went with light eerie gray lots of white got rid of all that 90s beige and again we took the shiplap and we went a little crazy with it so we got our black fixtures in here our shiplap wall accents and this is your formal dining room when you first walk in. So from there, before I show you the rest of the house, one of my favorite features is the master on the main. Not only is it on the main, it's on the total opposite side of the house. So you have other, um, two other guest rooms down here, but the master is completely separate, it's private, it's large, and whoever moves in here will love it. So you got a nice large master suite, big windows, everything in here is new from flooring to paint to baseboards to hardware, literally everything was brand new. Mind you, this house was just built last year. So we walk into our beautiful master suite. We went with our white shaker cabinets. Again, I love a light airy look. A white quartz, Calcutta quartz with gray veining. Don't mind. Of course, we always have a couple people that slack on the punch out, but so we'll have to hang our mirrors and stuff, but other than that, we're pretty much finished. We have a soaker tub here. And again, if you guys have seen part one, before the shower wall came all the way up to the ceiling and it was so dark, it was so cramped, it had this like swinging door that was super dated. So I took out half the wall, I cut it down to what's called a knee wall so that we could glass this out and now it's not super cramped or dark in here. So it did a lot for both the light in the bathroom altogether and in the shower. So now you have this beautiful frameless glass shower with this beautiful patterned towel on the floor and it looks great. 
separate water closet, and then you know that I love a good custom built closet. So we custom built this closet so that you have a his side and a her side, um, and it came out really well. So you wanna come in here. <clears throat> I love to add always a section for long hanging dresses, trench coats, all the things that don't fit in normal closets. We have the up and down hanging. For the girl side, I wanted to put like a little vanity-ish area so you can put on jewelry here, perfume, makeup, whatever. You got space for shoes or folded clothes, and then it continues all the way around. And then the same over here for his side. Lots of space for hanging clothes. You got room for shoes and folded clothes. So we made sure to utilize all the space in here so everyone gets what they need. All right, don't mind my stove that's out of place. Obviously that still needs to be installed, but we walk into this great big high ceiling living room, which again, I'm so happy with the outcome. We built this fireplace, so there was no fireplace there. If you guys know me, I am the queen of fireplaces. So we went with a cute little shiplap fireplace. Let's see if we can turn it on. Shiplap fireplace, we gave you the plug so you can put your TV. Um, since I didn't do shelving or anything, I decided to put in these art lights so you can get some cool artwork on either side of your fireplace. You have a nice big window that lets in lots of natural light and it's still open concept, so you can enjoy, you can entertain, and have a good time here. So let's walk to the, let's walk to the dining room first. So we have formal dining room up front, and then we have like an eating kitchen area. As you can see, we went full shiplap in this corner. Again, this is something totally different from my normal style, but I really love it. It really went well with the house, and I am super happy with how it came out. So something like shiplap is not super cheap to do just because wood's expensive, but it's a pretty easy change that will make a big impact in your space. So from there, we're gonna walk over to our kitchen. So again, before, layout was awful. It was a brand new house built in 2020. All the appliances were mismatched. The island before was a little tiny island sitting right here. It had this super dated sink in it. So we got rid of that. We kept everything here. So we'll have to install our vent hood, but our vent hood will go here, stove will go here. We built in our microwave down here. So it's a little bit more upgraded, a little bit more modern. And then we decided to install a peninsula with this beautiful farmhouse sink, which gave me such a headache. UPS lost my sink three times which delayed my countertops, which delayed my completion. It was a whole shit show, but it's here now and it was well worth the wait. It's beautiful, I love it. Um, and then we went with waterfall, again, the same quartz, the waterfall edge for a little bit of upgrade. And I am super happy with how the kitchen turned out. So it was well worth the headache. <laughs> then the biggest change, so before, this was laundry room, which I'll show you in a second and it had a door here, and then there was a door right here into the garage. But that left us with the super long laundry room that was not super functional, no pantry, and just a lot of wasted space. So what I did was create a pantry, reconfigure the closet that was here, and I'll show you what we did with it. So again, this was just hallway space. You would have entered your garage door here. So we closed that off. We made this a nice built-in pantry. So you have plenty of storage space in this house. And then this closet that was here, we didn't want to get rid of the closet. So I turned it into a beautiful wine cellar. And then so you can put all your beautiful wine in here. And then it's hidden, it's tucked away from the kids, and it's still super functional. So then we took our long laundry room this is the original um, laundry hookup, so we did not change that. But if you can imagine before, this was just wasted space. So we enter our two car garage from here into our now custom built mud room. Again, with our beautiful shiplap, our black hardware. And then you can come right in with your laundry here. So it's perfect for people with kids. You drop off your 
backpacks and dirty soccer gear, and then you walk on through and you don't have to track everything through the house. All right, so let's keep going. We're still only downstairs, guys. So we have a full bath down here. Again, I don't know if you guys remember, but they were, oh, they got rid of it already. Um, so this is a bathroom here. You can see it's fully demoed. Before, no, you're okay, you're okay. <laughs> this is fully demoed. So there's a tub, a toilet, a sink, and there was another sink literally right here. Why you need two sinks next to each other, I have no idea. <laughs> it was a sink here outside of the full bath that also had a sink. Why you need two sinks back to back, no clue. But we got rid of the unnecessary sink. We completely redid our full bath. So it has this gorgeous um, gray porcelain tile. We went with this beautiful chevron um, pattern tile on the floor. And then again, just stuck with the light airy theme. It's a big house, but before it was totally just disgusting. Like, <laughs> tan everything there were these little pieces of like stair rail trim that he cut and was stuck in the corners before so we just literally ripped out everything and completely redid it then we come down here and we have two large guest rooms so again great selling feature because not only do you have two rooms downstairs so it can be office it can be in-laws who don't want to climb stairs it could be kids rooms but they are separate from the master, so everyone's not right on top of each other. And they're huge. They come with these great big closets. Um, so all these are one closet. The previous owner put them, put two doors in each one, which I'm not sure why. And I think in the last video I said that I wanted to change it just for like a double door, but that was just gonna take our costs up astronomically because you can see all the electrical is inside of the, in between the doors. So we would have had to move electrical, move walls. Um, these are custom sized doors, so we didn't want to have to go through reframing them and everything. So we just changed up the hardware, painted, and left the double door situation, but you still get a nice big long closet. And that's in all the bedrooms. And then this just takes us to bedroom number three. Um, before we had these ugly like dining room chandeliers in here. So we upgraded the lighting. Most of them have um, fans, but I did kind of a combo of fans and light fixtures because not everyone loves fans. So you have the options. There's more than enough bedrooms for you to choose from. So I want to give everyone an option to have what they prefer. All right, so that's it for downstairs. Let's go upstairs. Don't watch me climb these stairs though, because I'll be out of breath. But I'll meet y'all upstairs. <laughs> All right, so we made it upstairs. Our last three bedrooms up here are up here. So we have a total in this house of six bedrooms and four full bathrooms. So this is the second, the third, the third full bathroom. This is shared between two of the bedrooms. And as you can see, it's super large. So it is so large because when you came in before, there was a wet bar here. A bar, there is an outlet water line for the fridge, and then there was a double cabinet right here. Not sure why you need the wet bar right outside the bathroom, but it's there in case you want a snack. A wall. I think there was supposed to be some sort of uh, fridge hookup in there also, and then it started the bathroom. That configuration made no sense. There was no need to have a wet bar before the bathroom. That's kind of gross. So we took out the wall, and then we made it all one large bathroom. I wanted to make sure that all the bathrooms were unique. They were all different. So I went with a super fun pattern tile in here, which again, super happy with how it came out. I've never used this tile before, but I think it looks really good and it makes a huge statement in this bathroom. Um, and then because it was so long, we had to figure out what to do with all this counter space. So a double vanity alone would not have worked. So I decided to add a separate counter for makeup storage so you can tuck a little um, stool under here and then you have a perfect vanity to get ready. Everybody has their own sink and it's not cramped at all. It's super large and so there's plenty room for these two bedrooms to share this bathroom. Then we decided, so <laughs> the tub was original um, 
And this large window, which I'm not a super fan of, but because we have a brick exterior, trying to close it out, which is doing a lot. Um, it does not have the prettiest view and you don't want people to see in. So one of the last things we have to do is still tint this window. So then no one will be able to see in, but you could still see out. And then it helps with the lighting in this bathroom also. Then I wanted to add a niche. I love a good big custom size niche for all your shampoo and soap and stuff. It's super deep. And then we added these three little cubby holes where you can roll or stack towels or extra for someone like me, hair products, face products. So we just wanted to make sure we utilize all the space to give you plenty of storage and nothing was wasted in here. So we walk out of there to bedroom number four and huge bedroom. This can be for literally anyone. You can fit so much furniture in here. The one thing I do love that they did when they built this house was all the rooms are oversized. So you have a large closet, again, with the two doors, you have some big windows for lots of natural light, and it's not cramped at all. Even for a fourth bedroom, you still have plenty, plenty space in here. So this is bedroom number five. This is actually probably the smallest bedroom, but as you can see, it's still a really good size. Still has a really good size closet over here. Like super big walk-in closet for a secondary bedroom. Um, so this will make a perfect guest room, kids room, office. So many options with this house. Now that we got the ugly designing out the way from before, it looks amazing. And there was actually tile all up here too. So if you can imagine, I'll definitely insert some clips so you can see just the amount of rubble and just trash and just mess we had to clean up was insane. So this is our last bedroom, the sixth bedroom. It also has its own full bath. So this can be a secondary master suite. This would be great for teenagers, for in-laws, the nanny suite, like so many options here, or just a lucky older kid with their own bathroom. Um, and this is actually that window that I showed you guys before. So not sure what the thought process was with just these two random windows here, but for symmetry outside, we decided it was best to cut through the brick, which was not cheap or easy to do. Um, but we did need to really add this extra window for curb appeal. It just made such a difference. Um, so I'm really happy that we decided to go with that. We were debated on it for a minute, but it made such a large difference outside. Again, huge room. You got space for a desk or a lounge area over here. You have your oversized closets and your own bathroom. So what more could you ask for? <laughs> Well, we made it to the backyard. We finished walking through the house and we didn't do much back here. We just kind of kept the yard cut. Lucky for us, he had just poured this brand new concrete pad and walkway. So that saved us a ton. We didn't have to do that ourselves, but we did go ahead and fence in the entire property. So before I believe it was only fenced to about here. And then you could see the commercial property in the back. You could see your neighbor over here. So now we fixed that problem. It is super private. You have lots of space for kids or pets or entertaining back here. And this came out really well as well. Thank you guys for watching another episode of Flipping Fancy. As you guys can see, even brand new construction houses can use a little bit of our expertise. This one needed a ton of work for something less than a year old. The craftsmanship was very poor. But with our expertise and our overcoming of all the challenges it presented us, we have a great product that's getting ready to hit the market here in Marietta. So if you guys are interested, let me know. It will be listed probably low 600s. Again, it's six bedrooms, four full baths, and has been completely renovated from the outside in. Um, if you guys have any other projects that you might need help with, I will leave my information below. Feel free to contact me. We are about to be booked up for the rest of the year, but we might have room still for one or two projects. Um, in the meantime, we have lots more content coming soon, so make sure you guys subscribe, you share, you like the video, and tell a friend, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye!